Okay. And we Perfect. are live, Your Worship. Okay, so thank you for uh, coming in tonight. It's 5.06. I know we ran uh, a concurrent with a standing committee meeting, but we're ready to start. So call to order. Um, any declarations of conflict of interest? Hearing none. That's not okay. Uh, approval of agenda. You see the four items. Four, actually, actually five. Uh, Someone's got their, uh, their mic yeah. open. Right here. Can we um, postpone item E? No, we can't. I'm asking the council. Yeah, no, what I'm, I'm, I'm presiding now. You have to go through me first, uh, Councillor Twitter, you know that. Okay, I'm going through you. Can we postpone that? I'm, I'm blindsided by that item being put on the agenda. I was just made aware of it here a day or so, a day or so ago. So I don't know why it's here tonight. I mean, it wasn't discussed at the last Parks and Recreation Committee meeting, and and then and then all of a sudden it appears at a special meeting. And the question is, why is this appearing at a special committee meeting, Council? Okay, so we have a couple of chairs that are here. There's the yep. chair of parks, who yep. dealt with it via email, and there's the chair of finance. Chair of uh, parks, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, excuse me, I'm excuse me. Kevin, can you mute? Because I'm getting an awful Someone's on. Council, will you put on yeah. mute? Okay. There you go. Go ahead. Councilor Ramsey, too, I think. Is he on mute? No, I'm on mute. Okay. Um. So this is the funding Go ahead. So this is the funding funding uh, stream that came to light last week that I first heard about it. Um, I forget what it's called. I think Peter has the, the name of it there. But anyway, it has to do with the green initiatives that we've always been told, as as uh, Councilor Yankoff will recall, um, when we were talking about the different facilities that the government has always told us is a lot of money in these uh, green initiative funds. Um, so this one is a is an initiative for net zero for the uh, arenas, um, with with a caveat that if, if they're going to give us up to seventy five percent to build a new rink, which this one is is tagged at around between twelve and fifteen million, so that means that there's a possibility of getting up to eleven million dollars of the total cost to build this third pad. Um, the the cat the uh, requirement to get that money is that you have to uh, tear down the facility that you're replacing. So the money that they've been asked for, the 50000 I believe, there's, there's uh, 10000 to do a study on Simmons and there's 40000 for a study at Cary. Is that correct, Peter? It's, uh, correct. Yeah, it's right here. Good. Yeah, so what, what, was, what was pleasing about this, guys, is that we were looking and hoping and, and still hoping to get some money through Canada Games. Um, if we do get a couple of million, and this, this process, it can give us up to $11 million. It's not going to cost the city very much money to build a third pad. So no, we, we can look at $11 million now and uh, whatever the uh, Canada Games may put on top of that. So Mr. Most people are paying $12 million, $13 million for a new, new ice surface. Uh, the city can conceivably get this cheaper than, pretty, pretty cheap. Uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Cody, we discussed it yesterday. Did you want to add any information? I I think Councillor Bernard covered it off. Your Worship, it was a it was a financial ask, and it comes through finance, and and it's here tonight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any? Yeah. Can I respond? Yes, you can. Okay. Well, from what I understand, Councillor Bernard, there is no money for Canada Games. Yeah. No. So, so, no. Councillor Twilio, that that hasn't been determined yet. So we can't say that in a public meeting. Oh, I can't. Okay. Well, I just did. Um, now the second item is, you know, to uh, to ask for funding uh, for uh, constructing the third pad at UPEI. I can tell everyone here. That's uh, listening to this meeting. There's not many people in favor of a third pad going to going to UPEI. Okay. Now, having said that, um, you can make up make up make 
whatever decision you want. I'm, but I'm telling you straight up that there's no support for a third ice pad at UPEI. Just the point and of then, order, your worship. And, and, and then the second thing is point to order, decommission, decommission Simmons Rink and decommission the pool. I mean, that's that's not what the community wants. The community wants a, a, a strategic plan um, for those facilities to build be built on on the Simmons site. So how are we going, in order to qualify for funding, now we've got to decommission the pool and the rink? Your Worship. Councilor Tweel, Councilor Tweel, we're now getting into the debate of the agenda item. So I'm going to ask, do you want to move to remove it? Yeah, I'll move to remove it, yeah. Who wants to second that? Okay, the agenda is there's a move, uh, let's move to... Who's going to move the, the agenda? Uh, Councilor Bernard, all I want to do is get the agenda going. You want to move it? Someone's got their mic up, open again. I, I just want to say, Councilor Tweel needs a seconder for that? Yeah. Okay, I can second it. Okay. So all those in favor to take E off of the agenda. Councilor McLeod, yay or nay? Nay. Councilor Roberto. Nay. Councilor uh, Deputy Mayor Cody. I, I, I was under the understanding this was a kind of a time sensitive ask. Do we have time to defer it and discuss it, or is this kind this, of wise? This, again, this is only to make it to a study level. This is, this is not to make a decision on. Who's I think Councilor Duffy's turn off there. Councilor Duffy, you're, you're, okay. you're still on the tape. Pardon? Your, your mic is still on. It, it's causing people. just about to vote. Okay. Uh, so, Councilor uh, Deputy Mayor Cody, the issue is is that this is only to study. It's not to make a final decision now. Uh, Your Worship, if I may say something. Yeah, j just let me get his vote. Yay or nay? Nay. Nay? I can't hear him. Okay. Councilor Mc... Deputy Mayor Cody, yay or nay? Nay. Okay. okay. Councilor McKay. I'm going to say nay, but I don't even... I'm confused. Okay. Councilor Duffy. Yay. Councilor Tweel. Councilor Tweel, nay? Councilor Bernard. Nay. Nay? Or yay? No. We have a rank yep. to build, and we Simmons is Simmons. Simmons got to be replaced. The sooner the better. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Councilor, uh, Councilor uh, Ramsey. Nay. Councilor Yankov. Nay. Councilor Duran. May as well go with nay, I guess. Okay. So there's, uh, I have Councillor McCabe, nay, okay. Uh, the only one for yay is Councillor Tweel, correct? Am I correct? correct? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Okay. So can we look at the agenda and move on? Just one second. I'm trying to get it here. I'll, I'll make a motion to move the move, move approved agenda. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. Second Seconded by who? I'll second it. Councilor Ramsey, all those in favor? Yay. Yay. Uh, do we have to do the roll call for some of these easy ones, guys? Yeah, Your Worship, I'm against the agenda. Okay, so that's nine to one, nine to one uh, for the uh, for the agenda. Okay. First item is reading of. The zoning development bylaw. And, okay, someone has their mic on. Uh, Mr. Kelly, do you want to read off the do the second reading? Yeah, just stand by, Your Worship. Your Worship, I think you and Councillor Twill are very close, and when Councillor Twill's mic's on, we're getting a lot of feedback, so they're both off there now. Do you want to thank you, Councillor Bernard? Do you want to read the? To the second reading. And yes, Worship. Whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown zoning 
and development bylaw P8-ZD.2040 as it pertains to the vacant property located on the corner of McRae Drive and Norwood Road, PID 192401, as attached, was read and approved a first time on December 14, 2020, be it resolved that the said bylaw be read a second time and approved. Moved by Councillor Duffy, second by Councillor McCabe. You need to turn on, on your mic, Your Worship. Shall it pass? Pass. Uh, pass. Councillor Duffy, Councillor Twill. Pass. 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 Okay. 10 0. Oh, Councillor Duran? Pass. Yeah. Okay. I'll let me turn that off. Be resolved that the said bylaw be adopted by Councillor Duffy and second by Councillor Cave, Your Worship. Going on. Pass. Pass. Okay. Deputy Mayor. Yes. Councilor McCabe. Yes. Councilor Duffy. Yes. Councilor Twill. Pass. Yes. Councilor Bernard. Yes. Councilor Moran. Pass. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. And number you two. The next one, Mr. And yes, Your Worship. Whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw. P8ZD.2042 as it pertains to lot 18 2 Sherwood Road, PID 455642, as attached, was read and approved a first time on December 14, 2020. Be it therefore resolved that the said bala be read a second time and be approved. Moved by Councilor Duffy, signed by Councilor McCabe. Shall I pass, Councilor McLeod? Pass. Okay, Councilor Rivard. Deputy Mayor Cody. Is this the Sherwood Road? Uh, this is the Erasno Brothers uh, uh, apartment, uh, multi, multi unit comp complex, apartment complex. Okay. O opposed. I thought I thought there was some conflicts on this, but. You're all right? This... No. Oh, this, there were conflicts on the point of order. Point of order. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 Uh, it, Councillor Duffy, did you mention, mention made a comment? Your mic is muted, Councillor. Uh, one thing, yourself, Mitchell, can you take the mic off? Uh, Monday night, uh, Your Worship, you and Councillor McLeod excused yourself on this. Now, uh, this is the second reading. Oh, yeah. That's right. You're out, your mic's muted, uh, Your Worship. Councillor Duffy, thank yes. you for reminding me. Thank yeah. you. And uh, me as well. Again. So Let's take another one out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor Cody, you have to take over. So, Councillor McLeod, we have to log out or just tune out. Don't participate. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Okay, no problem, um, Councillor Duffy. Okay, so the motion was read. Um, Charlotte Carey? Those opposed? I'm all okay. right. I'm for Carey. Carey, okay. So yeah. I think it's unanimous, uh, Mr. Kelly, with. Um, all right, thank you. I'll read the other yeah. part. Be, be oh, resolved sorry. that the said bylaw be ad adopted, moved by Councillor Duffy, sent by Councillor McCabe. Okay, Charlotte Carey. Carey. Gary. Gary. Okay. Gary. Just stand by. I'll get the mayor back in, please. Thank you. Are you back on thank you, Deputy. And thank you, Councillor Duffy. I uh, just got no anxious there to move into this. Okay, yeah, we'll no go problem. to the next, uh, the building code bylaw, Mr. Kelly. Uh, yes, Your Worship, one, one second, please. Your 
Your Worship wears the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Building Code Bylaw PHBC.3 as attached, was read and approved a first time on December 14, 2020. Be it resolved that the said bylaw be read a second time and approved. Move by Councilor Duffy, set by Councilor McCabe. Shall it pass? Councilor McLeod? Good. Councilor Bird? Pass. Deputy? Deputy Mayor? Yes, Councilor McKay? Pass. Councilor Duffy? Pass. Councilor Twill? Pass for me. I, I, I have a question for the CAO. Can you please find me? There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no Councilor Twill, there's no debate in the second, the second meeting. Okay. So you, can, you can't answer the question. No, it's uh, Mr. Kelly. It's a second reading. Uh, yes, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, your name. Yay. Councilor Duran. Uh, Councilor Duran. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Bernard. Yay. Councilor Ramsey. Yay. And Councilor Yankoff. In favor. Thank you. Be resolved that the said bylaw be adopted by Councilor Duffy, second by Councilor Cave, your worship. Shall I pass? Councilor McLeod? Pass. Councilor Verd? Pass. Deputy Mayor Cody? Pass. Councilor McCabe? Councilor Duran? Pass. Councilor Duffy? Pass. Councilor Twill? Pass. Councilor Bernard? Pass. Councilor uh, Ramsey? Pass. And Councilor Yankov. Pass. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you kindly. So the next item is the energy performance contract with Honeywell. Do we have someone to speak to that? Uh, we have Ramona on board, Your Worship. Uh, Ramona, do you want to start with that overview, please? Sure, just uh, Hamad's going to bring up the presentation just on his computer, if we can just wait for that. And did we decide to proceed with a, this in an open session? And you, um, Your Worship, which, which do you wish to do? Oh, we're doing, the open, we're doing the open session first, Ramona. So did you want this in the open, Your Worship, or did you want it in oh. the closed? Uh, uh, what's your preference, Ramona? Is it, is it any top secret information, or is it just open, transparent, and accountable? I'm fine with the open. I just wasn't sure if that was the wish of council to. Is any 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 concerns? Please speak up. Raise your hand if you have any concerns about it being in the open session. Seeing none. I think there's clear guidelines to follow. What's open and what's not. I mean, this doesn't even meet it or it doesn't. So I mean, doesn't meet one nineteen A B C D E F. Yep. And it should be in the open session. Perfect. Any other comments? Good. Okay. Let's go, Aman. Great. So I'm just going to go through a few slides here, um, and then there'll be lots of opportunity for questions if you have any. So we've talked about um, the energy performance contract. We've had this project on the go for some time now. So Ahmad and I are here. Oh, sorry. It sounds like there's a bit of a Some, someone's, someone's on, and I'm just ready to turn off. Please, if you're not speaking, just turn off your mic. Try that, Amona. Okay. So we wanted to bring a status update. Hamad is here, our energy coordinator as well. And we do have Mark Lanigan on the line also if any questions come up from that side also. So we've been working um, with city staff as well as uh, staff at Bell Alliance Center and East Link Center on this project for some time now in, in partnership with Honeywell. And we wanted to bring you up to date on where we are at this point. Um, so initially you'll remember our project objectives for this. Um, we're looking at opportunities for how we can 
um, implement our community energy plan. We have set out fairly aggressive targets in that um, that would um, require us to meet some of our energy and GHG emission reduction targets. We were also looking for an opportunity to streamline some of our energy efficiency work. So up until this point, we've done some of that work as um, piecemeal projects. We've done a few lighting projects here and there. Um, and it does kind of make it challenging when we do it piece by piece rather than taking a sort of concerted effort and looking at all our facilities at once. So we were looking at sort of alternative options of how we could move forward with these energy efficiency. We we're also looking at how we could use make use of funding and financing tools that would support this work. Um, as well as looking at how we can demonstrate um, the city of Charlottetown as a leader um, in looking at our facilities and making those changes ourselves. A lot of our programs ask our residents and the business community to take some of those steps um, to be champions for energy efficiency. So we want to make sure that we're really leading that charge in our own facilities um, and trying out both energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. Go to the next slide. So the RFP process, if you might remember, we put out a request for proposals last January and at that time we were looking for an energy performance um, partner um, that would work with us um, to develop energy audits of all of our city facilities as well as facilities of the East Link Center and Bell Alliance Center. And the end product that we were hoping for is that they would come back to us with a full report of these are your options, these are the opportunities that make the most sense for the city to pursue. Um, these are some of the cost benefits that are associated with those and that we would then move forward with the implementation phase. So we awarded this project in March to Honeywell and we've been working fairly extensively with them um, since that time to develop this report. So just um, to back up a little bit, an energy performance contract, essentially what we're looking here is a self-funded project. So um, those upfront capital costs that can sometimes be a deterrent to moving forward with a project, you're trying to look at projects that will pay you back through energy savings that will offset those initial costs. And you look at both sort of the cost savings as well as um, different grants that can help um, support that as well. So the project, that's what we mean by an energy performance contract, is that there's guaranteed savings associated with the project and the company that we work with guarantees those savings based on their calculations and based on those projects that you put forward. So that's what Honeywell has provided here to us. So we worked through several phases with um, Honeywell. Um, our initially, we did an opportunity assessment with them. We did a sort of high level look at all of our facilities. And then we decided that we did want to proceed to a more in-depth energy audit. So what we've done now is we've just completed step two, which is to develop all those solutions that the city would potentially move forward with. Um, so Honeywell has been working on the design and engineering of those projects. They've been researching grants and they've been researching options that would be the best fit for our facilities as they are. And now we have the output, which is the energy um, facility renewal report, which was in your package. So if council determines they would like to proceed with it um, to the next step, we would move then into implementation. So Honeywell would be the project manager and implement all um, of the measures that we agree upon in the um, contract. And then once implementation is complete, implementation up to two years maximum. And then the guaranteed period is that period where we audit our savings did we um, have the savings that we expected to receive? And um, are we happy with the results of it? So Honeywell provides that to us in that they, they do a monitoring and evaluation phase with us. And then we also have the audit option of auditing that as well. So we can ensure that we're happy with the results. 
So through the solution development, I just want to sort of reiterate some of our process here. We worked with city staff um, from all various departments. We worked with staff from Bella Lyon and East Link Center, and they participated in each of these phases. So we did a 30% review. Honeywell at this time kind of put every option that was on the table, and we helped them to refine that scope and look at what we would be moving forward with to the next phase. At the 60% review, we did that again, so we looked at they took a deeper look at some of the projects once we knew a little bit more about that project we were informed about whether we would want to proceed or not and then we've completed most recently the 90 percent review where they've sort of they've prepared for us sort of a final program that they would see us pursuing and um, we've had option to provide feedback on that So now I'm just going to go into the three organizations and I'm just going to give you an overview. So in your package also we've done executive summaries for each of the three organizations. I would highly recommend you review each of these. They're fairly short. I think they're two or three pages each. But they sort of outline what the projects would be at each of those um, facilities. So the total, pro uh, total project cost that we're recommending is um, 758000 at the city facilities that's plus applicable taxes and this has a simple payback of 10.7 years the majority of the work for us is LED lighting upgrades as well as a boiler plant upgrade um, some building envelope improvements automated um, software for some of our um, building control systems and transformer replacements so with these projects, we'd be looking at operate, uh, utility savings of approximately 64000 per year, an additional operational savings of 2500 uh, We do have incentives identified to offset some of those costs to the tune of 64000 And we would see a 16% reduction in our electricity cost, 13% reduction in our oil cost, and 7% in our district heat cost for the city buildings. For the Bell Alliance Center, we've refined the scope of their project down to 1.7 million, and this one has a simple payback of 13 years after incentives are applied. We would also see um, just over six, 60,000 per year for utility savings here, as well as 54,000 a year in operational and maintenance savings. And at this facility, we're looking at reducing um, electricity costs by 13% and district heat cost at 7%. And finally, with East Link Center, currently we have a project at 2.6 million plus taxes. This has a higher payback at 19.7 years. But what this includes, we have the lighting upgrades as well as a solar PV project. Um, some of these projects in this facility are deferred maintenance. They're projects that um, haven't been completed. For instance, they don't have the same ice plant controls and ice plant heat recovery system that we would have at the Bell Alliance Center. So that would um, have a significant cost associated to it. But as you can see, we've got significant savings of 85000 per year in utility savings, and we're reducing that electricity cost at the East Link Center by 30% and 9% uh, reduction in the district heating cost. So this slide just provides sort of a summary of what all the projects looks rolled together. So total value of the project is just over 5 million plus applicable taxes. We've already secured funding. The 126,000 for the project development costs has already been secured through FCM. And we've identified an additional 124,000 that the city would be eligible for to um, receive against some of the um, implementing, implementing some of those measures. Um, what we initially talked to council about was going with Honeywell for the financing of the project. We did weigh a few different options and at that time um, FCM provides low interest loans to municipalities for projects of, of this type and they also provide grants of 15% as well on projects over a million. So um, we did look at, into that option quite in depth and unfortunately this project isn't eligible under the FCM funding. So at this point we're recommending that city consider this as part of the capital budget for next year. And because we are seeing such um, attractive savings associated with this project, we still think it would be a really valuable project to go with even if the city was doing its own financing.
Now, I should be clear, and you'll notice this in the energy facility report that's attached in your package, that there are a number of initiatives that we did not um, recommend as part of this project. It doesn't mean those projects aren't valuable. Um, there's lots of things in there that the city could still pursue. And should we wish to proceed with an additional package of projects, um, we could do so after the completion of this project or in tandem with this project. So just want to put that out there to Council that there is an opportunity still to expand the scope of this project. It may affect our eligibility with FCM and allow us to access that financing, um, but some of the projects would not have as an attractive of payback as those that we've um, presented to you here. So um, essentially what we're looking for for Council tonight is that we're recommending that Council approve the project in principle subject to the final wording of the contract and a few small revisions to the project scope. So currently there's not um, an inclusion of any solar work for the city facilities. We would like to include with Council support a solar project for the city as well. I think that's a really valuable thing for us. We want to be doing we want to be doing that. There were a couple small changes that the um, Bell Alliance Center wanted removed from their scope. So we want to make sure that we've made those changes. And we are in negotiations right now with Cox and Palmer and Honeywell on the final wording of the contract. So um, if we have council's approval to move forward in principle with this project, then we would finalize the contract and get the final details together on their project scope. Um, we have made a presentation to the Bell Alliance Center Board and they have approved in principle contingent on the endorsement of City Council. And we will be presenting to East Link Center on Tuesday um, to seek the same. If all goes well with all of these steps, then we would hope to bring a resolution to Council on January 11th to approve the final project and authorize the signing of the contract. And then we would move right into the implementation phase, which would be up to two years to implement all the projects as described. And then following the implementation phase, as I mentioned before, we move into that measurement and verification phase where we're looking at those guaranteed savings. Did we achieve the savings that we hope to achieve and that were guaranteed by Honeywell? And so that both parties are satisfied with that. And then as an additional step, as an optional step, either in tandem or upon completion of the project, we could look at um, moving forward with some of those um, initiatives and measures that are outlined in the EFR report that we didn't include in this project scope. So again, still some things there that would be valuable to our city facilities and help with deferred maintenance. I should note too, we were talking about um, Canada Games funding and, and that is a potential. Um, so I just wanted that's still under investigation and as always we're always keeping our eyes open for additional funding that could offset some of these costs. So I wanted to keep it brief and not get into too many details but um, Hamad and I are both here as well as Mark too if you have any questions on the project or on our approach and happy to answer any of those you may have. Thank you, Ramona. And Aman is here. So, um, could you, uh, Aman, can you just take down the project management next steps? Because I can't. Okay, great. Okay. Councillor Ramsey, do you have a question, sir? On uh, mute. Uh, thank you, Ramona and, and Herman. Uh, it just said uh, you're looking for expenditures of 4.75 or something like that for this capital budget and the only thing I keep popping out at me is that after three years time we're going to be looking at it whether it worked or not it, like there's no guarantees basically that we will be sort of re, uh, recouping all our money right in 10 12 years you just have this in three years time like the whole thing could fall apart again is that going to cost us more money you'd like to keep going with the project Thank you. Ramona? Certainly. So your worship, how we have the contract structured and how energy performance contracts are structured is that the company that actually gives you a guaranteed savings rate. So the savings that are included in the presentation are guaranteed by Honeywell. If we achieve higher than those savings, those are recouped by the city 
But if for some reason we do not achieve the savings that they've outlined and guaranteed to us, they would be responsible to make up that shortfall. So that's an important distinction. Now, we can continue in a measurement and verification phase with Honeywell for as long as we want. If we wanted to stay with them the full 16 years and check it every year, um, we could do that. But there is a cost to moving forward with them in that phase. So we would recommend that we do that for three years just ensure everything is is shaping up the way we thought it would. And at the end of that three years, we say to Honeywell, we're happy with the project and we move on from there. Uh, thank you, Ramona. Thank you, Councilor Ramsey. Councilor McLeod. Thank you very much, Ramona, for your report. Uh, uh, has this gone to finance yet? I guess that'd be more of a question for Councilor Cody. Um, where are we with... Uh, you know, as far as this project sitting at finance, uh, you know, you hate to kind of be given a nod, you know, without having a full picture of where the city is financially and with COVID, you know, it is a worrisome thought. So just wondering if uh, Councilor Cody could share some light on what his thoughts are with finance. Thank you. Well, I think Ramona had indicated that there's some uh, capital requests there and uh, we haven't looked at the capital budget yet. We'll probably look at that in, in January. So, you know, to be honest, I, I can't give you a great answer right now, um, Councillor McLeod. But, um, you know, I think it's here for, for consideration and, and to take next steps forward if, if, if uh, Council so chooses. Councillor McLeod, just, just one point. Uh, Ramona, do we not have an Environment Sustainability Standing Committee meeting on the 22nd? We do. So, Your Worship, um, we didn't go to the Standing Committee prior to going to Council. And the reason we did this is because when we report on this project, we have to report to Public Works, Water and Sewer, Parks and Rec, Environment and Sustainability, and then Finance. Um, so we did, um, you know, Peter and I spoke about it, and we did determine that it would be best in this instance to go right to Special Committee of Council so that we could provide all Council members the opportunity to weigh in, as that really is basically entire Council by hitting each of those committees. Uh, Councillor McLeod, second question. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, Ramona, maybe I misunderstood. So, but did you say you wanted to have this on council for for the meeting in January? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, to go to all the other committees, we have time to to like. Is not not kind of rushing it if we're if we're meeting for a blessing here tonight. It still should go to all the committees, and most of them are going to meet until early January, right? So the intent, okay. Councillor, is that this is part of our capital budget discussion and because, again, uh, as was stated, it would have gone to all those committees and gone to all of you anyway in some form and that's why it's here tonight at least to move it to the capital budget discussion. Councillor McLeod, just one second. Councillor McCabe, can you just move, mute your button, please? Okay. Is, is that all right, Councillor McLeod? Okay. Any other questions? I'm sure there must be some questions. I'm good, thank you. Thank you. I see you, everybody. I have a question. Okay, Councilor Taylor, Chief of Environment. Thank you, Ramona, for your presentation. Um, in previous years, I'm not sure the exact dates, but if you go back in previous years, maybe even 10 years ago or uh, in that time frame, we did do energy audits, and I'm not sure. Um, if 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 you have that information uh with the uh previous energy audits of these facilities like bella line I'm, I'm sure that we did uh go through this exercise and what i was wondering is what i was wondering is uh, going through that exercise do we have an account of what was accomplished going through those energy audits Um, so your worship, when Honeywell was working on 
Oh, Councillor, Tw- oh, okay. Um, when Honeywell was working on this project, we took into consideration all of the energy audits that had been done to date. So we provided them with some of the work that had already been completed. We provided them with any of reports that we had done. So they used these in the development of their solutions um, to inform, you know, what had already been looked at, what was, where was there maybe a gap in the opportunity. So each of the facilities alone, I know, Carry a Bell Alliance Center story has completed quite a bit of uh, different upgrades over the last number of years and they've come to the end of that time where they are able to evaluate. I don't have the status of that evaluation and I'm not sure whether that has been completed um, but that's certainly something we can inquire as to whether any energy work of this type already completed has been um, sort of audited and reported on. This project to us against it in that it does include an auditing phase where we will be measuring and reporting on, on the savings. Thank you, Ramon. I, I would like to, just for my own, my own mind, like to get some kind of a historical perspective as to uh, all that work that was completed previously and, and, and what, what, were the, what, were the, uh, what were the results and how did it help with... Uh, you know, cost savings in the operation of uh, Bell Alliance Center, Civic Center, and any other uh, municipal facilities that we uh, that we you know we we contribute both from a capital and operational and and tap into infrastructure dollars as well. Um, I just like to if we can get some kind chrono- of chronological. Uh, some chronology of, of uh, you know, how that's evolved over the years. Thank you, Ramona. You provide that, Ramona? Certainly. Any other questions, concerns? May I raise a question? You sure can. So you're saying you could have bring this You're saying you're going to bring this forward for, like, the timeline that I presented as a resolution at the January Council meeting to move forward with implementation. Would that be at that time, or is Council advising that they want this to be concluded in next year's capital budget? That decision has not yet been decided. This will go to the Finance and to Council for the capital budget discussion. And so it may be premature at the ca- the first council meeting, but it may be some other time during the month of January. Yeah. It, Ramona, it does have to go to the standing committees. I, I think it should go back to environment sustainability, should it not, Ramona? Because it would be a capital uh, budget request from environment sustainability, or would it be it, all three departments? It would be under public works worship, under, under buildings worship. So that would be Councillor McLeod. Yes, Worship. And Councillor De- and Deputy Mayor Cody as uh, Chair of uh, Finance. But we are on a bit of a time frame here to work with Honeywell to worship, but it, it is part of our overall capital budget did, did discussion, so ultimately Council will decide that it will come to worship. Yeah. yeah, and sorry, to clarify, at our last um, standing committee meeting with the Environment and Sustainability, we had this included in the Environment and Sustainability capital budget. And on our meeting on Tuesday, the package went out today, it is also included in our environment and sustainability capital budget. It can be transferred to public works, that's fine, but we have moved it through that committee um, for final inclusion in the capital budget. Right. And just to clarify, Ramona, the the, the budget request is how much? The budget request is 5.0 million. Yeah, 5 million. And that's a capital request. Okay. And just to sum up, Ramon, you're not only talking about savings, but we're also took, uh, looking at less wear and tear on the machinery that does operate electrically, correct? So there's eventual save, a cost savings there. Yes, Your Worship. There's operational savings as well as energy savings. And what about additional staff? Do we requ- will, we, will it require additional staff to oversee this uh, as part of a... Uh, part of an energy saving program? No, the the value of this, Your Worship, is that it's turnkey. So Honeywell does, takes care of everything, project management, 
procurement, everything. Once we sign on, it's up to them to kind of make those things happen. Now, we will need to continue to stay as active participants and monitoring the project as we have been doing. But as far as the implementation of that work, that falls on Honeywell and their team. Okay. So, Don, I've got a question. Go ahead there, Council Bernard. Uh, Ramona, the $5 million was over how many years? The $5 million they're going to implement over a period of up to 24 months. So the $5 million would be expensed at that time. It would be, it would either be split over two fiscal years or it would be in one fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions for Ramona? I know that uh, Amon is on too, uh, so he could be available for questions. Um, so it will go back to finance and it will go back to public works and discussions, uh, hopefully back at environment sustainability. Good. Can we move on? Ramona, thank you. Amon, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're muted, Your Worship. You, you have to unmute Your Worship. Net zero design proposed public works building. So I see Scott Adams is here. Elbert, who else is here? Paul Johnston, or maybe Paul's here for a couple of projects. No, there's uh, there's Joey uh, Albert and um, and uh, Scott on this one, Your Worship, and uh, Scott and Scott will open it up. Scott's the lead person. It's your show, uh, Scott. Good evening, uh, Your Worship. Uh, so, uh, Council, I guess. The, so, I guess I'll give a little bit of an overview. Um, Albert is going to share his screen, and I will hand it over to him shortly, as he's been kind of the lead on this project. Uh, but uh, we bring this forward to uh, to Council this evening to uh, get uh, direction from Council on, on how we are. Uh, to proceed with the design of our new Maclear facility uh, that will go up beside our existing facility but have a driveway on to Brackley Point Road. Um, so the goal is uh, we're trying to again meet the our city's goals and making our facilities net zero um, and so we've been working with our uh, our designer Sable Arc, a local architect, on trying to achieve that. Um, so they have run a few scenarios and have made recommendations on to what is the best approach for the city in terms of this of this building. Um, and so I'm going to hand it over to Albert to uh, uh, to give you a brief overview of, of the uh, building itself and a little bit of summary of the numbers uh, in terms of building it uh, to get it to net zero. So take it away, Albert. Uh, can everybody see my screen there? Yes, go ahead, Albert. Yeah, so the uh, the new City Works uh, building, as you can see here, is going to be located at McAleer off of Brackley Point Road. Um, this is this would be the main access here, and this picture that you're seeing now is just an overlay of where it would be. So if you're coming up Brackley Point Road um, on your left-hand side, you would turn into it here. That's the parking lot, the building, and then some uh, backdrop area. This second picture is just kind of showing another view of that. So Sable Arc, like Scott mentioned, did uh, has is the architect that has been doing the design for us. And overall, their goal and is to meet the city's goal and achieve a zero carbon building to meet our uh, zero carbon energy standards. So to do this, they want to design a building that's well insulated, has low power use, and provide solar panels on site. In this case, it would be on the roof. Um, so this would help the city uh, reduce greenhouse gases and meet our community energy plan that Ramona and uh, Maud were speaking of in the last presentation. Um, so financially, we want to design a zero carbon building that would eventually pay for itself in annual energy savings. So the just a little bit of the description, and you can see here, these are all just kind of preliminary designs of what the building will look like. So Stable Arc, they designed it um, to, meet, to meet standards, um, to have water and sewer and parks and recreation in the building. Um, the building would be roughly 25,000 square feet, and the main entrance would be located off Bradley Point Road. 
Um, it would house uh, vehicle bays, work areas, office space, and storage units. So it's basically a simple rectangular shape with a sloped roof. And on the roof, you would have the uh, solar panel PV cells. So on here, you can kind of see a side view. So all of these bays are facing south. And you can see the slope of the roof as well. And then on the back, on the bottom here, you can kind of see some windows used for lighting for the cafeteria areas and the office spaces for water and sewer and parks and rec. This is just an overview kind of a floor plan of the main building so we can just kind of go into it coming off Brackley Point Road you would enter can everybody see kind of my mouse as well hopefully so you come in here perfect so you come in here through the vestibule area Parks and Rec is located right here this is their main reception um, they've got a meeting in a boardroom that both Parks and Rec and water and sewer would jointly use if they ever needed to meet in there for any reason. Um, you come through these hallways. This is a cafeteria that's shared by everybody. Um, there's some washrooms and some janitorial rooms there. Come down the offices. You have water and sewer workstations and office space, some more water and sewer offices. And then all along the bottom, you have 10 bays, five each. And most, you have two larger doors for water and sewer and parks and rec. This is all basically equivalent to the storage space they have now. They're getting slightly more because of the sloped roof and mezzanine area. So above all of these office spaces, you would have another another level um, that they could just use for storage. And that is really just taking into account the fact that the building was sloped for the PV cells. And then it's it's not really too much of a cost increase or anything. It just gives them more storage, and everything else that they have here is pretty much what they have at, at uh, the current building that they're in right now. So again, this is just kind of a side view of the building. So you see the water and sewer bays here. You see kind of one of their meeting rooms, and then above here you see the mezzanine area. So for the mezzanine area, they would have access through the bays, and they would have staircases leading up there as well. They could have some storage in there. Um, as you can see from here, it's a steel frame building, uh, roughly 30 feet on this side by 18 feet on this side, and then with the slope with the PV cells on top. So going through how Sable Eric designed the building, the first thing they had to do was create a base building that met national building code and national energy codes. So this is just the basic building. If we didn't want to do anything, energy related, anything sustainability related, that's what you would have to design in 2020 to meet those codes. So after that, they looked at how they could upgrade this building to make it zero carbon ready. So they used thermal and mechanical improvements. You know, if we can make the walls a little thicker, better insulation, what can we do to make this building not lose that much heat? And then after that, to go zero carbon design, they had to upgrade those systems so upgrade the roof to achieve solar panels and anything else that, that would make it zero carbon. So the goal overall was to have a building that produces electrical power equal to how much it's using annually. So Sable Arc did this design, they used their consultants and they come back with a few different options for us. You can see on here, so I've got five different options. The first one, again, being the NECB compliant building, the base case, the total overall cost. And these are all class D estimates, so they're not 100% sure. Plus or minus 20% is what Sable Eric and their consultant, their cost estimate consultant came back with. So based on the annual energy that uh, water and sewer and parks and rec kind of use at McAleer, and based on what they would have plugged in and the office space, the bays, the heating and cooling, everything in the new building, they came up with a cost to build the new base building would be about $5.1 million with an annual energy cost of around $29,000. The next option they looked at was a net zero ready building. So they improved the building envelope, made the walls thicker, higher insulation, 
with uh, VRFs, which is variable refrigerant flows and no solar panels. So the VRF is basically just uh, like heat pumps, regular heat pumps. Um, this cost came up to 5.6 and the an annual energy cost about $15,000. After that, they looked at net zero ready building, envelope improvements, geothermal, but no sol solar panels. So using geothermal underground heating um, and not putting solar panels on the roof would come, would be about 5.9 million annual energy costs of about 14,000. And you can see the percentages here is just a cost increase above baseline. Baseline again being the base case scenario, just the average building. Option four is zero carbon building. So you have envelope improvements, you use uh, VRFs, and you have 72 kilowatt hours solar panels on the roof. So this would be about 5.8 million. And the annual energy costs, they have minus $100, but that's basically zero. So it's saying you have enough solar panels to come up with a building that is pretty much producing all the power they use in a year. And then the fifth option, which is the option that uh, Sable Arc and their consultants have said would be the best in our case, and this is the one that they recommend, is uh, zero carbon building, envelope improvements with the geothermal heat pumps and solar panels on the roof. The cost for this is about $6 million. Again, annual energy cost roughly zero, and your cost above baseline is about 15%. So they recommend option five, the geothermal design, because they believe, and through studies, that it has the longest life expectancy with the least maintenance, operational, and replacement issues. Geothermal option is also uh, requires least demand for energy backup um, for backup requirements. So if you would have any type of uh, emergency situation, the geothermal option seems to be the one that would have the least issues. With the VRFs in option two, they need to be replaced roughly every 15 to 20 years. So any money that you're putting into it now, you'd have to replace it again. Again, that's going back in your cost and you're not getting the payback. So looking at this, we we talked to sustainability and Hamad and Ramona, and we came up and looked at some uh, financial energy incentives. So FCM, they offer some incentives that we have applied for. So one of them is a 15% grant on 80% of the project cost. And then on top of that, 80% of the cost can be loaned at 1.47% over 10 years for up to $10 million. So with that, if we go with, with the option, the geothermal option is $6.1 million in the loan and the grant, we would basically get $168,000 difference with the with the grant incentive and the cost from the original base case would be just 2.8% more. Again, this is saying that we get the grant, we get all the funding from FCM, then we're only paying about $168,000 to go with net zero on the bill. Um, so the cost of improvements to zero carbon with all of the incentives would roughly result in a five-year payback by saving energy costs. And we are still looking at other incentives that the city may be able to find through FCM and through other grants that could reduce these even further. So there might be a situation if we get more grants or more incentive that we reduce that 168000 to basically zero. Um, that's it. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Iber. Any questions? Right here. Councilor Twilko, right ahead. Just, just let me take, if you can take down the, uh, okay. Yeah. Take down the screen. Okay, thank you. Councilor Twilko. Hey, uh, thank you for your presentation, Yelbert. It was uh, quite informative. And this new building will house the water and sewer utility as well as parks and recreation. Um, with the construction of this new building, obviously there must be a lot of consultations with both departments and both departments must have signed off. What, uh, what would, if you look at, a, look at a forecast, what would the lifespan be of this particular building and 
with the growth of our city, has this been factored into the, uh, uh, you know, the size of the facility? Because the city's growing on an annual basis. And is there a possibility that in five years' time that this building might not be big enough for both water and sewer and the Parks and Recreation Department? That's my first question. Eric, could you answer for that, please? Or Scott? Um, I guess I'll take this question here. Councillor Twill, turn off your... Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Twill, in terms of your question, so... Um, yeah, so we've consulted with both uh, Parks and Rec and, and Water Sewer um, with their staffing, um, and they have been pleased with the design that uh, we're proposing at the moment. Um, and, you know, the life of the building is can be as long as you maintain it and, and you know, proper maintenance and all that. So, so the building uh, has a extre- uh, long life ahead of it uh, is what we'd anticipate for. Um, but in terms of expansion, um, and, um, and maybe Albert can bring up the photo, the overlay photo again for me. Um, so we have designed the building in mind so that we can add additional bays to it um, going back uh, towards uh, kind of the stream. So yes, back there. So we've designed it so that you can add additional bays, keep going back there to expand for future needs. So. Um, yes, so we've kept that in mind as we go ahead and design it because we do we realize that the city is growing um, at a very quick rate and so are our needs. Um, so we can uh, uh, this building can expand and that's uh, part of the design process. Okay, thank you, Scott. As a follow up, one of the challenges the current building has uh, has had over the last number of years and all the departments is having the proper storage, for, for aggregate and other materials. Uh, we've had to acquire land uh, over the last number of years to be able to store those uh, those necessities. And uh, does your plan here show showcase the, uh, the availability of, of land to be able to um, uh, storage all those necessary aggregates and materials that are required for whether it's water and sewer, whether it's uh, parks and recreation, uh, you know, parks, parks needs an opportunity to be able to put together the playground equipment. Um, will they be able to do that outdoor as well as indoors? And uh, as a follow up to that, this is built right beside a, a motel. And I wonder how that works in terms of the aesthetics and the ambiance, having a facility of this magnitude being built right beside a motel. Um, is there a conflict there, or how does that work? Can you bear or stop? Councilor Tweed, turn off your mic. Um, I guess in, in terms of your first question, um, um, for you know, for, for storage of materials and, and such, so the building does have a significantly more storage than either department currently has. Um, so there's ample room for uh, Parks and Rack or Water and Sewer to grow within that building in terms of storage capacity. Um, uh, so so that's not a problem. Uh, you mentioned the playground uh, sets. That is why on the Parks and Rec side, you still see that large bay, um, that large bay door. Uh, that was one of their design requests um, so that they can, in the winter months, they can put together their facilities uh, or their playground structures and build them in sores or there's room, there's lay down room around the building that they can also put them together so all everything that departments do now um, they will be able to easily do it um, still with this new building um, and again there's still room to grow uh, around the building so we've again kept that all in mind as we go through this process we know there's been growing pains uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, we meet the current needs of the city as well as the future demands for for the city and the other part of this um, counselor is that the bay doors are facing away from the ho- hotel and so they're they're facing the other commercial um, parts of the, of the park and that will help and mitigate sound uh, over to the hotel they're facing the south side yeah mm-hmm. thank you councillor Twill. any other questions uh, any other questions so the intention well, is that waiting. this will go forward as part of the capital budget discussion but in yeah. an effort to uh, get clarity when it goes, if, uh, if council can indicate whether or not they do support uh, the net zero approach, and we'll build that into our process, Your Worship. Just, just before, uh, I'm sure there'll be other questions. Scott or Iber, 
It's 25,000 square feet, so I'm assuming it'll be 100 feet wide, 250 long. Is that correct, Hubert? Is that some Scott? I'm not, I'm not certain of the exact dimension. Maybe, Albert, do you have them handy there? And Scott, while well, he's looking for that, what's the current size uh, footprint of our existing facility? Is it 30,000 square feet? I believe it's around 30,000 square feet, but Dalbert or Joey can correct me if I'm incorrect. The, the, I, I don't have the exact dimensions of the new one yet, uh, Councillor, but the current building is roughly, it's over 42,000 square feet. 42,000? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, one, the, the current McAleer building is about 42,000 square feet, and Parks and Rec in this building had roughly about 18, uh, 18,000 square feet and what without, about in the current building. That's their space that they currently use. But that's not a I'm sorry. That, yeah. Oh, I lost him. Mike is muted. Uh, Albert, if you can just un unmute, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, in the, in the current building of that 42,000 square feet, roughly, uh, water and sewer and parks and rec is currently occupying about 18,000 of it. Oh, the two that's, that's not including uh, shared spaces like the cafeteria, washroom, hallways, everything like that. That's why the, from that 18,000, you get up to about 25,000 square feet. Okay. And Abir, just, just on, on, on as, as you know from heat last, those overhead doors are usually, what, 16 feet high, maybe 12, 14 wide. So are they going to be automatically censored? Because that's every time you open them in the winter, you lose a huge amount of heat. Is there some kind of mechanism set up to, to reduce that loss of heat? You bear? Yes, yes, uh, Your Worship. That, that's what Sable Eric has been doing with this whole system. So those are going to be automated. There's going to be sensors everywhere. Um, that, that, those are the type of options we're looking at to make everything more sustainable. So, in the base case building, when we looked at that, that was built into it. And then improving everything we can before just adding solar panels, seeing what else we can do to save okay. heat. Okay, Councillor McLeod. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Thank you very much, guys, for your report. Uh, maybe uh, for Council's uh, benefit, just a little explanation on the uh, quality, the air quality, plus the quality of the uh, space that staff are going to have. Like this is a, this is going to like change, change their lives up there tremendously. And uh, I, I think a little more emphasis on just how, what this building is going to do for for the quality of work and, and uh, the air quality itself too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cloud. Okay. Another thing I'd just like to add there on top of uh, Councillor McLeod's point is uh, we're gaining a significant amount of parking spots, which we've been having an issue with at McAleer with this new building, as you see seen up the front. Coming in off Rocky Point Road, you're going to have, we're going to have about 30 to 50 more parking spots there. It, it, it would be great to encourage staff uh, to use the transit system because it's a direct line coming out now to road, Malpac Road, but that's something we can work on down the road. Any other questions? Yes, um, just a, just a, another question regarding the uh, property owner next door, the motel owner. Has there been any consultations or collaborations with the motel owner to ensure that uh, you know they're okay with uh, development, this development that's that the city is putting together? Scott, are you there? Uh, your worship, at this point of time, no, we haven't. No, we haven't approached the uh, the hotel uh, owners at this point in time. Um, this area is to uh, is zoned for commercial for the purpose that we're doing, so we're well within the zoning uh, for for this uh, facility. Um, and um, you know, uh, we haven't had a complete design or anything of that nature either to notify them of it. So we thought it'd be pre too premature to make any. Uh, notification again we're, we are within the zoning bylaws uh for this facility that we're building okay thank you scott you bear okay so 
do we have to put a resolution? That what's the next step here, Iber? If the um, council would just give us the nod uh, to proceed to net zero design, Your Worship, we'll continue. Correct. If not, we'll go with the uh, the other uh, base design, but we just need some direction and again bring this forward as part of the capital budget discussion, Your Worship. Councilor Bernard, you next Go right ahead there, Councilor Bernard. I just want to know, um, I'm trying to remember, we have a carryover in the budget for this building. Was it $3 million? We did budget $3 million for this year, that's correct. And the net zero cost is now projected to be, was it 4.6, 4.7? 6000000 uh, with funding about 742. I'm sorry? 6 million with funding around 742,000 uh, coming from the FCM. Okay, so 6 million minus 742. So it's about 5.2, give or, give or take. Yeah. Okay, and you have 3 million already carry over, so you're looking for another 2.2 million. Correct, yeah. if council agrees Correct. with the net zero approach. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bernard, are you for net zero? Oh, for sure. Okay, oh, for sure. We should get some cost recovery over time. Yeah. Deputy Mayor? But I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm just wondering, okay. uh, so, Peter, that, that's all the funding that so far you guys found for net zero. Right, yeah. and there may be other pockets we may be able to go after, as is Ramona in her, her, her program. So, again, this is preliminary, uh, and we'll continue to search out other opportunities. So, uh, uh, so far, I'm sure, if we're looking for more money, Ramona can find it. Right, so worst case, worst case scenario, we're talking about 2.2 .2 million more, and that, that could even get uh, reduced as we find, because there seems to be lots of money for net zero. And that's yeah. based on current projections, Councillor. That's it. And it makes us as a promoter of net zero, less than our carbon footprint. Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Cody, yay or nay? Yeah. For net Councillor McCabe, no problem. Councillor Duffy? Councillor Duffy for net zero? Yay. Yay. Councillor Ramsey? Uh, I think, yay. Uh, and I think Councillor Benerv, is, uh, those are the questions I wrote down too. Like if, uh, if there was a $3 million carry carryover and everything along that line, like we could get away half decent with a fantastic building. Yeah. So, yes, I'm in favor. Councillor McLeod, any problem? In favor. And Councillor Duran, is he there? Yep. Councillor Duran? Yep. Councillor Duran? Maybe he went to cup of, he probably went for a cup of coffee. Okay. Well, we got oh, the majority, yeah. anyways. Sorry, Councilor Drawn. Councilor Drawn. Just one second. I'm just trying to get Councilor Drawn. Councilor Drawn is in. Good. Councilor Yankoff. No, no. Councilor Drawn. I'm in favor. Okay. Um, your worship, Councilor Drawn is now online. Uh, he said yay. And Ramona, is there any cost savings? This could also work into Honeywell producing or making more cost savings, correct? This is outside the, I'm sorry, I'm just sitting in, this is a, yeah. a public works project, but um, this is outside the scope of the Honeywell okay. project, but it was oh. certain to be city savings that we would oh, yeah. get report on and share. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You muted, Your Worship. Your Worship, you, you can it. start moving on the project, right? Yeah. We're all right with it? It'll go back as part of the capital budget discussion, Your Worship. Okay, keep that going quickly. Okay, thank you, uh, Scott Adams. You there? And now the next, next item is E, ICIP, uh, um, Investing Canada Infrastructure Program Stream uh, Climate Change Mitigation Funding. Mr. Kelly, do you want to give some background on that first? Um, Frank is here, but I will just open up here. So we were approached by uh, the Inf Infrastructure Secretariat uh, that there is one stream that we may be able to access for the third pad. It's called the climate um, change mitigation uh, stream. Uh, and uh, the two rinks currently under construction on the island um, in Tyne Valley and Rusco have uh, entered in through this program and they are uh, uh, moving forward. For us, there's an opportunity to, uh, as was discussed, to get sufficient f uh, f uh, substantial funding towards this program uh, if it is a, a, a approved and in order for us to move forward there are studies that have to be met so we have to prove the greenhouse gas reduction uh, is part of this overall uh, build as well as the energy cost would also have to be proven so those two studies have to be done uh, in advance of the application uh, as well as some other uh, studies that um, that a recreation 
will have to undergo as well. And Frank can give you a bit more review of that, Your Worship. Okay, Frank, can you give us some background, please? Sure. So actually, so the uh, uh, Peter mentioned about the uh, the carry aspect of it. So that's one aspect <coughs> of it. So that's the large report of it, part of it. But the other second part is uh, since his third head is replacing uh, Simmons Arena, there's required for uh, Simmons uh, Arena and the pool to be decommissioned. And so what we would need to find out is what the estimate costs uh, for this scope of work, including the rehabilitation as well. And uh, we would have to go and hire someone. And this has to be part of the application we submit. Uh, so we need to also demonstrate that the retrofits, uh, the retrofits and upgrades to Simmons are not feasible. And therefore, it does not make sense financially to undertake these. Uh, so right now, we would have a, a contract element to review the Simmons master plan to review that was done back in 2013. We would also look at what's the cost for decommissioning of Simmons Arena, uh, looking into the you know, potentially had material so Thank you, Frank. Council Bernard, do you want to follow up on anything as Chair of Parks, Recreation, Leisure? Well, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're getting 70, up to 73% funding to build a, a replacement ice pad. We, we've talked about Simmons for the last couple of years. We talked about the lifespan. We, it's beyond its lifespan. Uh, I recall a number of years ago there was a study done, and apparently the, the chlorine leakage from the pool that's been going on for years has, has affected the uh, metal beams that are in the ground that hold the rink up. I talked to staff, and the rink's actually sinking. Whenever they've uh, done some paving in the, uh, the parking lot, they notice that the, the, the uh, building is down a couple of inches. They'll, they'll tell you. So, you know what? Um, council and all agreed on the report. <coughs> The, the arena report, council agreed that they were going to put this third pad on carry. Uh, we were looking at probably $78 million of city costs. Right now we're down uh, to, to, to $2 million, and that may go lower. That's, to me, it's a no-brainer. Councillor Duffy, did you raise your hand? You're muted, Councillor Duffy. You, sorry, Councillor Duffy, you're muted. I, I think it's great. It's in my ward. The rinks, like Cody Banks, they're they're getting up in age, and uh, it's like a, an old car. You can't afford to have it anymore. You got to get something new going for you. So uh, I, I think it's a great addition to the ward and a great addition to the city. And just if Mr. Kelly or Frank, again, this money that we're voting on is to study. Just repeat what it was, uh, Frank or to, Mr. Kelly. It's to, uh, uh, you have to do a greenhouse gas reduction uh, study, Your Worship, for number one, which will be done by uh, Kerry. Uh, you also have to approve the energy reduction costs with the new versus the old, which is also involving a study. And then we also have to do a condition uh, analysis of the um, a Simmons and determine the cost to uh, to decommission that operation to your worship. So total cost that we're asking for this evening, and I'll read out, I'll read out uh, the, uh, the motion if you wish, and then we can and go for so another 50,000, your worship. Comment on that. Thank you, worship. Yeah. Could uh, Councillor Bernard or Councillor Yankov for council, can we just put the resolution on the floor and then open it up for debate? I just want to make a comment, irregardless. But yeah, sure. Can okay. you move it? Do you want to move it? It's, it's moved by moved. House. I have to put on yeah. your worship. It's moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Cody, second by Councillor Bernard, that the City of Charlottetown approve 40,000 additional capital funds to be added to the 2020-2021 capital budget grant for Capital Area Recreation Inc. carry to cover associated costs to undertake the required reports and other expenses <coughs> during the um, submission of a funding application, and that the City. Uh, and that the uh, city of Charlottetown approved 10,000 additional capital funds to be added to the 2020-2021 capital budget for the Parks and Recreation Department to engage in the necessary professional services to compile information on the decommissioning of, of Simmons Arena, Your Worship. Okay. Uh, Councillor uh, Council Bernard and then Councillor Yanka. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to, first of all, I guess I should uh, <clears throat> thank uh, our CAO for, for Finding this fund, the CCMS fund, um, it, and this is quite a saving for the city of Charlottetown if this actually does go through. And, and, and like I say, what I read, it was at least 73% of funding uh, coming from the federal government out of that climate change mitigation stream. Uh, but I did want to add, um, you know, when we're talking about removing Simmons Pool and taking this building down, uh, that by no means 
is saying that you know in the future we're not going to replace the pool or there's not another sports structure that can go up uh, where this one comes down. This, but right now, as part of this funding, as part of the criteria, you, when you, if they're going to give you this kind of money for a replacement rink, they want to know you're replacing a rink, so one has to come down. Thank you. Councillor Yank up. Sorry I missed you there earlier. You have the floor. Okay, that, that's okay, Your Worship. Thank you. I'm probably a bit premature, but I just didn't want any of us to forget about making sure that when this rink gets completed, that we make sure that the user agreement um, states that, you know, it, that the citizens of Charlottetown get, you know, um, first dibs at it versus I know that there's been some talk about the university and the other people having it. I don't know if it's true or not, but I just wanted us to be mindful that um, the residents got um, lots of ample opportunity to use the facility. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Yankup. And just for as a reminder, 85% of the board membership, including the chair, are city reps. So we can send our changes to the agreement through them. Any other comments? Go ahead. Well, go ahead, Councillor. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on Councillor Bernard, um, the monies and the cost savings, that monies could be spent on a new facility and a new pool at Simmons, at Simmons location now. So we're not prohibiting spending that money. It doesn't have to be spent at UPEI. It can be spent at Simmons, where we can replace the rink and replace the pool at that site in the community, where it's truly a community facility, as opposed to spending another $11 million at UPEI. So we do have that option. I, I just want to make that clear. And if I'm wrong, I want someone to clarify that. We do have the option to spend that money on the, on the Simmons campus. But again, Councillor Tweel, I think <clears throat> Councillor Bernard stated that the John Jonathan Hackley part. Uh, you're, you're, you're still on, Councillor Tweel. Sorry. Uh, the Jonathan Hack report, he presented it to Council. I think there was a vote taken, and I believe it went 7 3 to go with his recommendation. So that's that's the that's the router at the avenue we're going down. But again, I think it was stated by Mr. Uh, or Councillor Bernard that this uh, green fund and uh, Councillor Bernard, I, I'd like to, I know we thank Mr. Kelly, but Pamela uh, Williams with the province was working with Bob, Paul Godfrey at, at TIE on this same agreement with the other municipalities. So. Uh, again, this is another partnership with the province and the city uh, trying to improve, ameliorate our facilities here in Charlottetown, Tyne Valley, and North Rustico. So uh, I think we're, we're going down this path. And tonight's resolution is to allow the studies to go ahead. Yeah. Can I follow up on just the comment you made, Your Worship, as you're speaking from the chair? Um, yeah, that was Jonathan Hack's recommendation. It was an option in the report. We did not vote on that by resolution to spend the monies to go to the University of Prince Edward Island. But I guess the question I have for you is, who did Jonathan Hack consult and collaborate with? Could you outline for me, and I'd like to get the times and the dates of all the user groups that Jonathan Hack, he was paid $100,000 taxpayers money in the last year. So can, can the CAO or the manager of Parks and Recreation just do up a brief. I'd like a copy of all the meetings, times and dates of all the user groups that Jonathan Hack consulted and collaborated with and, and where they all agreed to build a facility at the University of Prince Edward Island. I'd like to get that information, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I think, uh, Councillor Tweel, his first recommendation was to construct a new 5,200, 5,500 seat uh, sports, entertainment, cultural facility then you know he gave some options. Here, What's that? Point of order. You know, I, I, I just, just, let me, just let me finish, Councilor Mayor. Just let me finish, yeah. finish on this. So that's where it came from. Go ahead, Councilor Mayor. No, I just find more often than not, we go over conversations where decisions have been made months ago. Yeah. This was all talked about. We had these conversations over and over again. Decisions have been made. And now, you know, when we have a resolution for some funding, I find over and over, old conversations keep coming up in the public forum. When okay. we had these decisions, we've made them, council has voted, 
and, and we're supposed to be moving on. We're into it, we're into it now where they're doing design at Cary. Here's a, here's a stream that, and I know the problems had mentioned that their Tyne Valley and the Resico ones are under the same stream. Um, so it, it's, it's an, we always, everybody know we wanted to replace Simmons at some point. So all these questions are already said. Are you calling the question? Call the question. Question. Okay, call the question. Okay, Councilor Yankoff, yay or nay? In favor. Councilor Ramsey. Yay. Councilor McKay. In favor. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cody. In favor. Councilor Rivard. In favor. Councilor McLeod. In favor. Councilor Bernard. In favor. Councilor Duffy. In favor. Councilor Twill. Disagree with the recommendation from senior management, both in City Hall and Parks and Recreation, to go to UPEI. Councilor Bob Drawn. Uh, okay. Nine to one. Okay. So the next item we have is going into a closed session. Um, so you do have to pack the session. I, I need a resolution to to go into a closed session. I'll move. And that's that's under section uh, 119, subsection 1 E and F. So it's moved by. Sorry. Councilor Duffy oh. and Councilor Ramsey put up their hands, Your Worship. All those in favor. Okay. So, okay. Mr. Kelly, can stand, you move us into a closed session? Just stand by, please, Your Worship.